Welcome back to an uh, episode of the Max Term Podcast. We'll call this a Max Term Short, if you will, in that we are going to touch on one player, one current event, and that's William Nylander's contract, which it sounds like we're sitting here the night of January 4th recording. The goal is to have this out ASAP, but there's a chance that we record and the contract is done before this before we were able to even push this out but regardless we're going to talk through where we see William Nylander's market value the comps how he got there and I get and we're going to get into our age-old question of contract of our projections at least of what what are we projecting market value or what he's going to sign for because I think we have a couple numbers that we're that we're going to throw out and they'll differ a little bit so William Nylander based on our model we have projected as a market value eight years 11.68 million so 11.6 11.7 eight years about 93 and a 93 mil 93 and a half million dollars basically is is our market value projection how do we get there yeah, so I, I guess there's a number of different factors that go into the process here, but the main thing is when we uh, run our model, you uh, put Neil under through that and came up with six different names that it spit out for us as comparable. So Nylander's generally a winger. That's really where he's going to be throughout his career. Really looking at Artemi Panarin as the high-end winger, and then a couple other comps as Johnny Goudreau and uh, Pasta, David Pasternak. Also thrown into the group as kind of similar players, there were three centers as well. Nathan McKinnon would be the high-end, Anze Kopitar on the low-end, and right in the middle, another Maple Leaf, John Tavares. Altogether, it kind of gets us to this eight-year about 11.68, you could even call it about 11.7. So those are all our comps. I think another factor we try to consider is just overall his place in hockey in the NHL as a top winger. 11.68, that would put him from an AV perspective as the highest paid winger. Probably temporarily as others sign, but... uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's due for a big payday, and these comps are all going to really favor him in negotiations. And we're, we're calling Nylander a winger, but compared to Panarin, Goudreau, and Pasternak, he has played some center and had a level of success doing so, so he probably do, might get a little bit of a bump especially if he were to go on to the open market, he would probably get a little bit of credit for having a level of flexibility. Again, is a team signing him to be their number one center? No, but someone that you can slide over in a pinch is certainly helpful for, for teams, and, and I think he would get the premium paid for that. We should mention here is this projection is under a projected $87.5 million cap, I know Gary Bettman had penciled some uh, number like a hundred thousand dollars higher. We'll we'll stick with our rounded eighty-seven and a half million right now, as as everything really is in pencil. For just for kind of comparison context here, we projected so about thirteen point three five percent of the cap. So if that were under the current $83.5 million cap hit, that works out to an AAV of around 11.15, 11.2, if you will, which for me personally, taking other factors in outside of our model and what that spit out, that's about what I expect the contract to look like. So so our market value is closer to 11.7 AAV, Ninety-three and a half million dollars total value of a contract. I think realistically, he signs. I mean, hockey players love doing their superstitious stuff. Eighty-eight million, maybe eighty-eight point eight million over eight years. Eleven point 
one that just feels like a hockey player thing to do and in the context of everything it makes a lot of sense yeah so a big part of that is the difference of the seven-year contract and eight-year contract and who is actually able to give that to him that eighth year that's something toronto can do for him he goes to open market he's looking at a seven-year deal so Let's say he goes to the open market. Let's say he can get that 11.7, we'll call it. It's going to be on a seven-year deal. Really, he should very much so consider taking a eight-year deal at 11, locking in more guaranteed total value. So yeah, that is kind of a, a I don't want to call it a huge factor, but it's a fairly significant one when we're looking at what not necessarily what his market value is, but what is realistic in this specific situation. And the other thing we kind of have talked about offline um, multiple times, and I think this is another big hockey thing, is is the hierarchy, the structure of the team's contracts. So John Tavares right now is on an $11 million contract. Nylander's kind of in a similar situation to Tavares when he signed that $11 million. So maybe they do go just above it to, you know, show that, hey, you, you've you actually produced a lot. You're going to be rewarded at a little bit of a bump. But realistically, Tavares will be out of the picture, at least at that salary and once his current contract's up. They ju- they already gave Austin Matthews his, his extension, 13 to 5 if Nylander comes in, we'll call it a touch over 11, that leaves the Leafs the ability to have a similar structure to what, they, what they've what they kind of been working on with Mitch Marner coming in between Matthews and Nylander. We, we could probably sit here and debate a long time if Marner deserves or doesn't deserve to come in there, but I, reality is, is he's going to probably come in between the two. So if Nylander comes in, just a shade over 11 that allows them to bring Marner in around 12, which feels relatively fine. And then Matthews will stay as the highest paid at 13. That all makes a lot of sense. It does. And this, I guess kind of gets a little bit away from an individual player and what they're making. But in general, that's a lot of money to tie up into three forwards, but that might just be how Toronto kind of needs to go about this you have three elite no question first line guys they're gonna try and keep them it it might sound crazy but the cap's gonna be going up four million this this upcoming year that's probably around the number it continues to go up so you're going to see contracts in hockey go a lot higher so if toronto can get nylander on an eight-year deal opposed to that the shorter term that Austin Matthews took that's going to be a a win for them in the long term anyways and then if they could do the same with Marner long term that would be a win as well yeah it might be a little bit pain now but I think down the road those deals will age really nicely yeah and something I want to throw out there quick Toronto is projected to have about 32 and a half to spend this offseason and Obviously, it appears that number will be a lot smaller when Nylander signs, but TJ Brody, Giordano, I guess Timothy Lilgren, you've got the two guys brought in this past offseason, Bertuzzi and Domi, but no one's necessarily breaking the bank. We could see some of these guys go. I think it's pretty obvious to get the Nylander deal done lock it in they've got the money for it and then once that happens figure out what to do afterwards yeah and Sam Samsonov as well was coming yeah. off the books so they they might need another goalie but they still but they still have Joseph Wall as well so they they have this offseason will be maybe a little tricky for them to navigate but they really, the next two years are going to have money to work with because Tavares will be off, not this yep. offseason, but the next, and that will free up, all, I mean, that frees up basically Nylander's contract right there. So you kind of, this offseason, they're going to be carrying both Nylander and Tavares, but next next offseason, probably 
worst case is they're carrying Nylander and Tavares at the cap hits that they've been on just flipped, if that makes any sense. So Nylander yeah. will be the 11, and then Tavares maybe more in the 6 to 7 range that where Nylander kind of was. So yep. it, it, it's there. Yeah, it, they're going to be okay financially as long as they are careful and don't make other uh, crazy decisions. Um, they're in an okay spot, especially with the cap increasing, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, Nylander, do you have a, a final, I guess, a final guess? So about a month ago, I talked to John Mattis from The Score, and he had put together an article on Nylander and kind of was seeing where we were ballparking his projection. At that time, I threw out $88 million over eight years. I'm going to stick to my guns here and say 88 million over eight years, maybe 88.8 million over eight years. Yeah. An extra hundred thousand each year, but I'm going to stick to my guns and I'm going to say right around 11 million is, is where this contract ends up. And that's a big step up from where our preseason, I guess our, our off season projection is and Neil Anders just played good, really good hockey where he's deserve deserving of a payday. Yeah, I mean, we were looking at a little over nine mil uh, before the season started, uh, and that that might have been a touch on the low side for him. But regardless, even if we were thinking nine and a half, nine seven five, it's still a pretty significant jump. He has had a great start to the season. Um, it, he's he's earned it. He's gonna be paid as one of the top wingers. So I'm sticking with that. What number would would you want to stake your reputation on? Ooh, eight years, definitely. I'm going to say, I don't know, just to be a little different, I'll say he gets 11.25. I know it's just a touch higher, but it's a round number that guys sometimes sign for, so <laughs> we'll go with that. I, I don't think this market value projection we have, the 11.68, would he get it from another team? Absolutely. I don't know if just situationally that I, I don't think he gets there with Toronto. Yeah. Uh, so we're both, we're both we'll say as the insiders say a shade over $11 million yep. as, as his AAV for his final contract. And again, I, that's going to sound, if you're listening to this, you're a Toronto fan, you're a hockey fan, you're going to think that's a lot of money, but if if that's on an eight year contract, that that's actually probably a win for the Leafs. It should age well. For so, sure. so I think I think where you start to get a little concerned actually about the contract is if it's that around that AAV, but half the length, like four or five years. I think that's when you start to be like, wow, Nylander did really well here. Kind of like Austin Matthews. Exactly. Exactly. And by kind of exactly like yeah. Austin Matthews. Yeah, so the Leafs can't get themselves in a situation where they're going to have to deal with Matthews and Nylander in the same offseason. So I think I I really am pretty sure that they're going to make push for the eight, eight years, and that's going to get Nylander, I think, at least $11 million AAV. Yep, I agree. So that's uh, we'll call that the max term short, if you will. Uh, thanks for listening. We'll have a full episode out as well this week. We appreciate you subscribing, listening uh, on U YouTube and any major podcast platform. And we'll talk to you next time.